try try to look this way now, please, kind of. Not too much smiling because it would look a bit kind of. Well, I'm not, I'm not telling you what, but the smiling part may not be quite becoming, you know. They were once neighbors in a thriving mini mall at the corner of Western and King Boulevard. Today, they stand solemnly in front of the rubble that once provided their livelihood. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. Now, their misfortune is the subject of a photo yeah, essay for perfect, National yeah. Magazine. They say they agreed to participate so that something good can come from their loss. Mrs. Ligon, if you can move to the other side of your husband, please. We're standing now on the site of what used to be the Aquarian Bookshop and Cultural Center. And for many, many years in Los Angeles, uh, the Aquarian has been kind of a staple, really what we call a cultural icon in the community one of our treasure trolls, a meeting place for artists, writers, scholars, community activists, uh, researchers. The, also, it's been uh, really a resource in terms of the books and the materials that have been here and available to the community, books that you can't get anywhere else. I had, over the last five years, four book signings here, excuse me, at the aquarium. Over the course of time, in addition to the book signings I had, I would say that any author name or established or unestablished, they always knew that the aquarium was a place that they could introduce their books. So you had individuals who just had no names, burgeoning young writers that were starting out, the aquarium's doors were open. You would find them sitting over here autographing their books and speaking a little bit about their subject, all the way over to people like Margaret Walker, Alice Walker, uh, Alex Haley. They all came through the doors of the aquarium at one time or another. And by the way, I should point out something else, too. All the ashes we're standing on, you're standing on books. You're standing on literature. You're standing on a little bit of history right here. So it's just not wood and charcoal. These are books, or they were books. This is the Phoenix Fire. The Phoenix Fire, to have the, that, that is the legend about the Phoenix that burns him, that lives for 500 years and then burns himself and out of his ashes, he rises again. It's a kind of a resurrection, we would call it. A number of people asked me in terms of that, they said, well, what's, why aren't you moaning or crying or something about the loss of your bookshop? Well, I said that I wouldn't be teaching as a doctor of metaphysics if I was going around moaning and things of this kind. But each event that happens in our life, we must try to understand it and move on that to other facets. That's a new beginning, a new birth. And so that's the other phase of that particular idea. So that's why I was really, really willing and hoping that, that uh, we will be able to reestablish the Aquarium Bookshop. Things come and go, but ideas are eternal. And I think that's part of the evolution of, of humankind, so to speak, the progress of people. It's the ideas. It's the intellect, I think, and you cannot destroy that. The human spirit always wins out in the end, and the human spirit, to me, is manifested in the written word, the printed word, books, books, their ideas, and you can't destroy that. Chris, just move with the family a little bit to your left. We had a business called uh, People's Choice Thrift Shop. It was a thrift and consignment shop. It uh, was really community involved in the sense that not only could people donate things to us, but they could bring us things, and when we sold it, we would split with them the profits that, that came. So that gave it, uh, people an opportunity to make money off the things that they uh, were normally going to throw out. No, thank you. No, it looks great. Thanks. I think she'll be able to sit in a tire for a while. Huh. Pasadena. This keeps you going. This keeps you going. Otherwise, you might consider quitting. When you got a family, you just you don't have a choice. You, know, you just got to keep, keep going. Okay. And everybody was afraid down here okay. to speak up. Like there's there there are uh, drug houses all around the neighborhood. The people are afraid to say anything because if they ever got caught saying anything, the next day your windows are broken. Our windows got smashed several times just because of uh, a color TV didn't work right. Just small little issues. You had to watch every little move you made 
And that's no way to live. Chief Auto Parts, that manager got shot in the chest. He's in the hospital. This is before the riots. This is all before the riots. Now, we're talking within a six-month span, okay? Within six months, he was shot. There was a shooting right behind my store where an uh, undercover was shot uh, through the car by a 17-year-old kid, which I knew personally. Quiet. You'd never think he was into gang. I know 15, 13-year-old kids that carry a piece in their back right behind here, and, you know, it's no big thing. And I'm not talking a few percentage. I'm talking a lot of kids that do their homework, they come home, they go to school, they play basketball, but they have a piece in their back. Do you have any common sense? And you have a little business, and you're feeding your little family, and you're trying to survive. This is not the place. South Central is not the place. That's all there is to it. It's too tough, and your life ain't worth it. None of these would have been burnt in the middle. None of these stores should have been burnt. If the when they, the riot was going on, I was back in there cooking because I had no idea that they was going to set it afire. And then I got on, and I found I was on fire because it started in the video store and the 99 cent store. And when I decided, when they come told me the store was on fire, I really couldn't believe it. So they had to pull me out of there. And we did more business Thursday morning than we had done the whole week. People was looting and they would stop and come and have breakfast and would pay. It was a lot of looting. The looters would put their stuff down, come into the store, get them a soda or a cake. They say, are you all right? We say, yes, we are all right. They said, we're going to come back to see if you're fine. We said, thank you. And they did. And these little kids, these little kids, and they talk about the future. That was the future that was out here tearing these buildings down, you know? And everybody was talking about a Rodney King thing. This wasn't a Rodney King thing. This was a people thing. They did what they wanted to do. You know, like Rodney King said, for the first two hours, I could understand them being angry. But after the first two hours, you had time to think. You know, and then with the, with the TV, everybody sitting in front of their TVs, looking, the people telling the other people where to go, where there's kids that don't go to the Foot Locker. You know, but they telling them that here's a footlocker over here. You know, no policemen around. You can come over here. They didn't say it, but that's what they meant. We want to say that this is not our crew. <laughs> you know, I don't know where this crew come from. You know. It's heartbreaking that it yeah. had to happen, but I don't know. How could you stop him? The gentleman with the white hat on said that he was he was out of a job, but now he has a job. <laughs> so what am I to say? I'm not going down to file up unemployment, you know? I'm gonna work. I'm gonna work, yeah. help clean, I'm gonna work clean up. This is the this is the second center that I've been at, cleaning up, cleaning up, scratch. You know, I'm scrapping, true yet, but still and yet I'm cleaning, okay? And, you know, I just want to see everything get cleaned up and you know, for the guys and work crews and get in here and start, you know, rebuilding the place, you know? Yeah. Cause I, hey, I've seen this, I've seen this lot go through many changes. Better yeah. foods, better foods to the swap meet, from the swap meet to the shopping center. And I lived in this community for 43 years. And to see, see my neighborhood look like this, man, you know, <laughs> it's really, it's, it's heartbreaking. You know, it, it hurts because I put 15, 16 hours a day, every day for three years almost. And then it got so we, I could start taking like one day off. But when you put in all this sweat and all this time and the years you put in here and, and, and all the stuff we had accumulated in here, then it all just go in about less than 20 minutes or 30 minutes. You know, it hurts. But see, it's still, I didn't, I didn't worry about it a lot, though. Because I figured that it's going to be, although I didn't have any insurance. But still, it didn't bother me as much. You know, but see, I believe in God, you know, because I believe in God. And I know that uh, God's not going to let me suffer. 
I'm a Baptist. I go to Paradise Baptist Church on 51st of Broadway. Joe is a Muslim. Mm -hmm. He, Ishana, is a Baptist and a Muslim. She can't make up her mind which one she wants to be. She goes to a Muslim, Muslim school. school. And we try to keep her in a private school mm -hmm. because she's not public school material. Why I say she's not public school material, she's kind of hyper. And hyper. Hyper. Okay, well, hyper. Thank you. She's kind of hyper, and we would not put her in the regular school because the regular school system, they're not as tough as they used to be. When, when, I, when I give you the lunch money every day, what do I tell you? Don't get no free lunch. And don't, don't, don't go in there pretending like that you don't have money, and then you keep your money. Isn't that what I tell you? Okay, that's the same thing it is about looting. Instead of you going out looting, you go to work. And you, you go to work and, and buy stuff. stuff. And that's the you same don't way just go and loot. This is the first time we really, really asked her, asked her about, you know, really asked her about the riot, you know, and, and the things that she saw. We really didn't ask her, but the first night, she was just, you know, had us no. going to the doors because she was worried that no. the fire was going to come here or maybe they were um, break in and take our stuff, you know, because she's seen the people going in and out, out of the stores. So she thought, well, maybe that they may come here. You know, we reassured her that they wasn't coming here. And after the second day, she saw that, that they wasn't coming here and she soon settled on in. If we go ahead and, and try to do and accomplish more than what we had, maybe it won't be such a bad effect on her. But if we continue to try and we end up getting something bigger and better, she can see, well, we went down, but we came back. And those, those are the things that we're trying to keep in her eyes that we are going to come back, and it's going to be bigger, and it's going to be better. That's, that's good. This starts looking good. Oh, yeah. the manager, All right, look at me, please. 